Hey everyone, welcome back to Hotel Monaco. Love it. Yeah, just different perspective, so. Good times at the beer garden, so. PT asked Dan. I'm Dan. <laughs> I'm not. Um, so let's talk about decision makers, getting to decision makers. Okay. One of the things I see with salespeople a lot is they frequently, and, and this says a lot when I say it this way, it talks about how they're also going about what they do. They present to non-DMs, non-decision makers and then wonder why they're not getting further along. One, they're presenting, they're not getting to pain, but two, they're also talking to the wrong people. So can, one of the biggest things I think people struggle with is sometimes you can't start with the ultimate decision maker. You need to start a conversation somewhere else to work your way into that. Um, they're not good at getting to that next layer though, and they share and do too much with that non-decision maker. So you don't want to ignore them, you don't want to treat them like they don't matter, but you don't want to treat them like they're also the decision maker. So it's kind of fascinating, but talk about the struggle to get there and how to pivot off of a non-decision maker to try and get to the decision maker. I don't know, John, I, the only way that stops is you get tired of it. Yeah. I'm so fair. tired of talking to non-decision makers. I'm so tired of doing presentations to people that can't write me a check. I, when you get sick of it, You'd be amazed at how much you stop. You'll suddenly that. change, yeah. Here's the second part is the C-level people, or, or, or most of the time those decision makers, they're actually really nice people. Yeah. It's the yeah. lower ones that are the worst to deal with. And, and, and third, I, and I don't know if this is true or not. This is just what I have on my mind. Yep. They're bored. They yep. want to meet with you. There's, there's a scene in the office, and this is embedded in my mind forever. <laughs> Andy is, I forget what he's doing, but he's decided to just cold walk in on a company. And he goes up to the executive assistant and goes, I'm here to see the CEO, unless he's busy, right? <laughs> and the lady's like, no, I think I can get you in. And as they're talking, this door opens and this guy peers his head out. He's the CEO. He goes, is someone here to see me? <laughs> and Andy walks right into the office, surprised. That's kind of what I have in my head whenever yeah. I'm meeting with decision makers is, no one else is calling on them. They want to see me. Uh, so, so all that being said, let's get real serious here. I think we need to have this mantra. I only meet with decision makers. Yep. I will interview other people, but when presentation occurs, when budget yes. numbers, discussions, I only have that stuff with decision makers. And when you yeah. have that mantra, things change. Yeah, it's interesting, the, the interview side to it. That's an interesting way to put it. I haven't thought about it that way, but too often we see so many salespeople presenting full force to somebody that can't make a decision. Yeah, and here, here's, here's the catch. If I gave you a list, if I gave a salesperson a list of 10 people to cold call in a company, yep. one of them was the CEO and then you had all these other ones, which yep. one would they call? We would like to think it's the CEO, see, it's but the it's the last not. person they're going to call. <laughs> it's, it's they're exactly. afraid of them. <laughs> They're afraid of them. So let's just go out and waste our time never talking to decision makers. Again, when you get tired of it, you'll start to make a you'll change. You'll change. There we go. All right, everybody. See you again tomorrow. Take care.